Welcome to our presentation of Deep X and how you can use ground force braces and struts. We are working in this example with metric units and we have already adopted Eurocode 2 for concrete, uh, British uh, standards for steel, and uh, we're going to be presenting an excavation with a sheet pile wall and one level of braces and hydraulic struts by ground force. Uh, the program can easily run in English units, but uh, because the manufacturer is actually British, we have adopted these standards to make it more common for their use. What we'll do is we'll go with the wizard, we'll maintain English units, we'll select to perform from the analysis type a limited equilibrium analysis first and then a nonlinear. We can actually run both analysis at the same time in two different design sections, but we're just simply going to keep one, uh, one model. For simplicity, there's options to run limit equilibrium or nonlinear analysis. We have different types of excavations that can be easily modeled with the wizard. In the model, you can actually do more complicated uh, situations uh, where uh, you have broken ground and so on, but the wizard is basically there for simplicity. Now, in order to use the wizard to do bracing, we're going to select this type of an excavation, a braced excavation. And this will create a 2D model and a 3D top view uh, with the struts and whalers. We're going to first specify the excavation depth, let's say like uh, uh, 7 meters, and initial wall length that can be changed. The excavation width uh, B or B1 here, let's say that is 12 meters. A top of wall elevation, groundwater, and a secondary excavation uh, length, let's say 24 meters. We're going to be spacing our struts at 5 meters horizontal spacing. And now initially we're using a 600 millimeters by 19 millimeters, but we don't want to do that right now. So we're going to say use hydraulic or mechanical struts and click edit. Now this is the default section. We want to import from ground force, so we'll say database, ground force, and let's import one of these sections here, MP250 replacing the existing section and what we see here is the basic properties of that section of that hydraulic strut uh, the hydraulic jack its properties on strength we can see the envelopes that are being used or recommended there's ultimate envelopes with length and allowable these are recommended by the manufacturer there's options with uh, uh, using like uh, the capacity with uh, various loads, accidental loads, and so on. So the program will actually use all of them, and you can define which one you want to use depending on the individual conditions. Then on transition struts, we can actually input import uh, additional uh, sections for transitioning from the main section to smaller ones. We can click edit, specify length and edit for the start for the left and right side. And we can also specify connector plates. And if we're going to be using a connector plate and so on. We can also click use hydraulic whalers. Click edit. Go on ground force. Select the mega brace. And here we have the basic section that is being used. We can always click edit. The exact properties hydraulic with the inner section and the outer section. By clicking edit here we can see the uh, hollow uh, square section, dimensions and the yield strength. And the outer section. The allowable jack uh, or hydraulic ram capacities and maximum as specified here, the minimum length and the maximum length for the adjustable portion and the allowable moments can also be specified according to the manufacturer this incorporate the allowable design load into them on the axial load and we also specify the outer length we have joint moments for the joints from the different section extensions uh, for inwards bending and outwards bending 
ground force uh, doesn't have any capacity on uh, the outwards bending. It's a pin joint in that in that respect, and that's fine. You just have to locate properly where the joints are located in the positive zone moments. And there's advanced options where we can specify the available length segments. These were imported from the ground force manual. And also we can edit how the main joints and the pin joints are. These are also taken directly from the manufacturer. We can click OK. We can also model a change in temperature in degrees Celsius and a temperature load correction factor. The next step is to edit the soil types. The soil types are used in the uh, soil properties. This is a list of available soil types that the program starts with. You can of course add, delete them and modify them as you want. There's a soil name that appears in the boring and the description. We try to keep the soil name short. A basic soil type behavior. The main difference are really between sand and clay. Unit weights, total and above the water table. Effective properties. Any of these buttons here help you estimate parameters. Poisson's ratio permeability and so on and K0. Elastic properties. There's also options to estimate. And you can show SPT data and hide it as well, if you wish. And we're also going to work with this clay. We're going to try and model a London clay here. Let's say 200 kPa. 21 and 20 kN per cubic meter. We can, we can keep the last properties the way they are and click OK. The next step will be to actually edit the soil layer elevation. So we're going to be using the soil types from here into the soil layers. Yes. So we have at elevation 0 meters the fill layer and let's say at minus 5 we have this stiffer clay. Now in the nonlinear analysis it's important to specify the overconsolidation ratio so this way we can capture increased strengths because normally consolidated clay has smaller strengths. We click OK. Click Next. We have a seed pile wall. You can click Edit Section Data and you can see the various wall types that are available like soldier piles, seed pile walls, second pile walls, tangent pile, diaphragm walls, soldier pile and tremid concrete, custom sections or combined seed pile walls. And you can add as many sections as you wish and use different wall systems there. We're going to keep the seed pile wall here. Click Next. On the stages we can specify where exactly the supports are going to be generated, at what elevation or depth. There's options to use an automatic elevation where you say I want to locate two levels of supports or use tabulated elevation. So we're just going to use a tabulated elevation and say at depth of 2 meters, excavation 2.5, the support elevation minus 2. Click Next. And on here we can actually select the type of searches we can apply directly on the wall or a strip load. Now you can apply as many searches as you want in the program. It's, this is that's just some different options. And how that searches can be calculated, with what methodology. We're going to use elasticity equations. And we're going to keep the current structural code settings. There's also options that we can generate all the British... Uh, Euro codes or any other Euro code or as to LRFD load combinations if we want to, but we're going to try and keep it simple here. The program is recognizing right now that with the seed pile wall, uh, we probably need to readjust the length of uh, the excavation so that the seeds fit appropriately. And we can apply that recommendation if we want. And what has happened is that the program has basically generated, first of all, a base model with a 2D analysis and a plan. Now we might or might not agree with this plan and what we might want to do is we might actually 
not agree, for example, with that strut being directly on the joint over there. So we probably can double click on it and relocate it like this. We can double click on that strut and relocate it there. We can take out one of the struts here or one other strut, for example, like this. Relocate one of these struts and let's say, for example, 9 meters and 9. These are re a reference to the nodes N2, N1, and so on. You can actually double click on those nodes, and you, this doesn't have to be a rectangular excavation. There we go. So the wizard is good for generating quickly a model, but you can always uh, create an excavation from scratch or a plan from scratch. And this plan is actually, will, these whalers are going to be picking up the load directly from the base model. So what we're going to do is we're going to press calculate all the design sections. The program is analyzing, we can see that here. We get a summary of results, displacements, settlements, mo wall moments, wall shears, the structural checks on the walls, the maximum support reactions from the 2D analysis. We can also see the wall embedment safety factors. Now this is obviously working quite well. And you can also go on one design section and see the results for every stage. If there was something that was looking wrong, it was going to pop out in red. We can select from here what design section we want and which wall, left or right. And we can generate uh, a report directly from here. But we'll do that later. So let's click exit. And what we can see here is basically the reactions, the bending moment, and the wall capacity. Obviously, we can um, uh, optimize that seat pile wall section. We can see the structural check on the way on the strut. The soil pressures. The water pressures. Now we have excess pore pressures here due to the undrained clay. And we can also go to the project plan where if we click the moment, we can see the bending moment on the whalers. If we go to the 3D tab, we can actually relaunch the wizard from here and we can draw struts, tiebacks, explode the items here, or optimize for regular steel members. We can see the axial load on the whalers or the braces, however you want to call them, depending on where you are located in this world. We can see the displacements. And we can also check the combined checks on the braces which checks the whalers, the, uh, the braces from the very start, from the hydraulic segments, the inner and the outer. Let's actually, that's the inner, the outer. There's a joint here, joint, joint, and a pin connection at the ends. So let's save this. Making sure always, and we're going to say ground force example. And now that we have it saved, we can go actually on report, report options. This will be our report, typical report for uh, the 2D analysis. We can say preview. I'm going to say do not use borders for sketches. There's an analysis summary of all the design sections, positive moments, negative, structural material data, which is global to every design section. A summary with positive moments and capacity, maximum negative, wall embedment safety factors, and support reactions. And the basic assumption on the last stage. Envelopes of moments. And shears displacements 
and you, we can export the sketches which are showing those results the soil properties the wall data and sketches at every stage with displacements, soil pressures and so on. There's a lot of data that you can actually export. We actually say select all, erase and take the 3D frame summary results, diagrams and sketch results and preview and we're looking here basically at the summary of the whalers, their names and the structural checks on the struts, their structural checks, the basic arrangement showing the names of the whalers and struts, and the various results at every moment, at every stage, and then individual whalers showing the reactions at the, the individual struts and their names, the stress checks, the, act, the line load acting directly from the analysis, the bending moments, shears, and axial forces. And basically this concludes our presentation. Uh, one more detail that uh, we have is that if we actually go to DXF drawings, we can export all the stages to DXF. This is the model, but we can also generate a sketch view. Where we're exporting whatever is happening on every stage. And that can be exported by right click to DXF. And you can also export result diagrams with your hydraulic sections here for the whalers. We can also import the hydraulic struts for the 2D model and so on. And we can adjust the number of columns however we wish. And this concludes our presentation. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.